No workshop is complete without the right work surface. And if your workshop is the great outdoors, this potting table may be perfect for you. Hi, I'm Brad Staggs, and this is a great project for a Saturday afternoon. It should take you about three to four hours, depending on your skill level and, of course, the number of power tools that you have access to. Speaking of, let's take a look at the tools we're going to be using today. A table saw makes some of the cuts a lot easier, but if you only have a circular saw, that'll work just fine. You'll also need a router and some bits, a jigsaw, and a drill driver. As for materials, we're using pressure treated southern pine since it will be outside in an unprotected area. The treated wood will ensure that the table will be around for years to come since it resists rot, mildew, and termite damage. Now the table is made up of four legs, obviously, a top, what's called an apron that goes around the perimeter. Down here there's a bottom shelf and something called a stretcher that keeps things nice and square. There's some bracing also up underneath the, uh, the top and the uh, bottom shelf. So uh, let's start with the simplest thing, that would be the legs. We'll get those cut. The legs are 45 inches long and you'll need four. Next we'll cut the apron and stretcher. They're identical, each made from four pieces of two by four. The front and rear are 45 inches long and the ends are 18 and a half. Instead of a plain butt joint, we'll miter the ends of each piece. Since we'll be adding some detail with the router later, this will make a much better looking connection. All right, we'll assemble each side separately, then we'll join them together here in just a little bit. To begin, lay out two legs like this. And remember, our apron and stretcher are basically the same length, so it doesn't matter which one you choose. Go ahead and lay one across the top here as the apron, that's closest to you. And then the stretcher is actually eight inches from the bottom. The top surface of the stretcher is eight inches from the bottom of each leg. So lay that out, measure it out, and we'll use a framing square here to make sure everything's nice and square. Then I'm gonna clamp this whole assembly to the table and I'll show you how we fasten it together. Here's a helpful trick a small piece of 2x4 with a 45 degree miter to be sure the apron and stretcher are positioned correctly for a tight joint, then clamp in place. We'll be using 2.5 inch screws designed for use in pressure treated lumber. I like to use 4 at each joint on the long sides and then 2 on the short sides. That's why this pattern is so handy. It's just a scrap piece of paneling that I've measured and drilled pilot holes into so I know exactly uh, which pattern I'm going to put at every corner. Then I use a scratch awl to mark those locations at each joint and I know they'll be in the same place every time. Here's how you make the pattern. Use a piece of quarter inch plywood or paneling three and a half inches wide by ten inches long. Once you've determined the locations for the screws, mark the pattern and drill holes. Now you'll have a consistent screw pattern around the perimeter of the table. You also won't be wasting time measuring at each corner. All right, I've drilled all the pilot holes for the long side here. Now let's talk about this little jewel. This is a countersink bit, and this will just make a little seat for the head of the screw, keep us from splintering those wood fibers, make things look a little bit nicer. Here's how it works if you haven't used one. You just pop it in the hole right there and just give it a quick burst. Literally, that's all we need to do. These run about $30, $40 for a good one, but it's a great one to have in your toolbox. All right, I'm gonna finish prepping the rest of these holes, and then we'll put the table together. Once you've hit all the pilot holes with a countersink bit, install the screws. All right, I'm starting to box myself in here. I finished off the one side, put all the screws in, and then made a second side exactly like it. How do they tie together? Pretty simply. These 18 and a half inch long pieces, the apron at the top, stretcher along the bottom, they're mitered. I've already drilled and prepped the pilot holes, so all I have to do is clamp this whole unit together, screw these in, and we're starting to look a lot more like our finished product over there. So let's get to work. Fingers. Be sure to align the 2x4 stretchers and aprons at the joints. The clamp should close up any gaps. Once they're all in place, attach with screws. Alright, take these clamps off of here and don't hesitate to spend a little extra time on these joints. Use the clamps to pull them tight, then put the screws in and if you have to do some adjusting, spend the time, it will be worth it. The next step is to put in our bracing. We're going to use 2x2s across the bottom. Across the top, we'll use a couple of 2x4s. Here's how to get the right measurement for these. First of all, we're just going to divide the top into thirds 
and put those braces in at, uh, at the appropriate measurements. I'll let you do the math. The way to get the right length for these is to take your tape measure, come down to one of the ends, and measure the distance from the outside to the outside leg. That will give you the exact distance that the table is on the inside here. And you want that distance to continue right across. That'll correct any bulges or warps in the wood as well. And remember, when we put our screws in, you want to make sure that that bottom screw stays out of the path of that router detail that we're going to do here in just a minute. I like to get all the screws started for the braces. That way when I'm holding the braces in place, trying to clamp them, I'm not fumbling around for the screws. I know exactly where they are and they're all ready to be driven home. Moving on to the bottom, use a scrap of the 5 quarter inch deck material to space the supports. The deck board should be flush along the top of the stretcher. Be sure to drill pilot holes and install one screw on each end of the center supports. Add a support to each end of the bottom. Cut them to fit between the legs and screw into place. Okay, all the bracing is in. I've got it laying on its side and the top is facing you. The next step is to put our router detail on. Uh, what we're going to do is the bottom of the apron here and the top of the skirt. We'll use a cove bit, this one right here, with a bearing on it. It's essentially, you know this distance here because you don't want this bit to come in contact with any screws. Make sure you double check. I know we measured, but just double check. If in doubt, take it out. Speaking of out, since this is going to kick up quite a bit of sawdust, I think the lawn could use it. So I'll meet you outside with the, uh, the table and the router. I think that routed edge really adds some nice detail to this table. It's really starting to look good. Let's work on the bottom shelf next. It's made up of three pieces of the five, four, uh, five quarter inch deck board. And the thing about this is we'll have to put the two outer pieces in first, notch around the four legs, and that's going to leave us a strip down the middle that's a little bit narrower than a stock piece of this uh, decking board. So what we'll do is attach these, get these in place, and then go ahead and measure that space and rip a piece down and uh, fasten it all in, and we'll move on to the top. Use a jigsaw to cut out the scrap and fit the boards into place. The last board is the centerpiece. Just measure the distance between the two outside boards and rip a 5 quarter inch board to width. Soften the cut edge of the board with a roundover bit or sander to match the other edges. Finally, the top is made up of four pieces of the 5 quarter inch deck material, each measuring 48 inches long. Once you've cut them, use the roundover bit to soften the top and bottom of each end. Then, measure and mark the center point of the table along the length. Install the first board to align with the marks. Now, just clamp and screw the remaining boards into place. Well, all that's left is the cleanup. Not bad for an afternoon's work, huh? Uh, don't forget to check out my page at the Span Pine website for tips and uh, great projects every month. More to come. I know what a couple of my gardening friends are going to be getting for Christmas this year, so I've got to go find a couple of really big bows. <laughs>